Committing to and keeping milestones is a key part of uh, retaining investor confidence in a share, and Hayden Lock at uh, Emerson has done just that with some announcements recently, which shows that you're on target. Uh, but before we get to that, just give us a, an out, uh, outline of what's going on at Emerson with this potash project. So we have a development stage potash asset in northern Morocco. Um, but basically, we've kicked off the scoping study, which will assess the high level technical viability of the project and importantly, for most investors out there, wrap some economics around it. Uh, it's progressing extremely well and as you refer to, we had a piece of news out in the last week, uh, which really confirms the belief that we have as a management team that this has the potential to be a low capital cost potash development, yeah. which is incredibly rare. So let's, let's, let's park that to one side and go back again and ask why potash? What is it about potash that you find so compelling at the moment? So potash is fundamentally a potassium-based fertilizer. That's what it's widely used for. It's, it refers to any uh, potassium-based fertilizer, really. Um, that then plays into this long-term agri-theme that I think many people are aware of. The UN is estimating that the global population is going to grow by 2.4 billion people over the next 30 years, uh, which is a number that I like to put in context by saying it's equivalent to a city of London every 40 days for 31 years of new mouths to feed. Uh, and so in order to feed those people, you need to increase the yield from an ever shrinking uh, plot of arable land per person. The only way to do that is to use fertilizers. There's no other way to achieve those yield gains uh, that we need in order to feed those populations. And as a result, potash, which is not substitutable, is fundamental in that. So we see amazing long-term demand drivers uh, which is why we're invested in this for the long term. But also in the short term, in the last two years, we've seen a really strong rebound in the potash market. So last year was a record year of demand. This year, another record year of demand. A lot of people calling next year a record year of demand, and we've seen the prices respond accordingly. Yeah, why Morocco? That's going to be the next question. So, number one, the asset is there, but uh, you know that's not a good enough answer because we went and did our due diligence on Morocco. I've worked in Africa previously. I worked in Mali. Morocco is in terms of Africa, easily the best jurisdiction I've, I've worked in. It's uh, got a fabulous mining code, a really strong impetus from the government to attract foreign direct investment. So we're seeing the government really uh, pushing hard to attract companies like us to come and invest in the country. Great fiscal regime, really supportive government, uh, ease of administration, uh, you know, legal frameworks in place to support companies like us. So a really good place to operate. Mm. OK, let's, let's come up to date then and get this most recent news uh, and get your, your word on that with the scoping study, the very beginning of the scoping study. Um, what is it we now know that we didn't know a couple of weeks ago? So the first portion of, that we released was just the capex relating to the access to the mining horizon. So that is, for an underground conventional mine, how do you get from the surface down to that mining horizon? Uh, the vast majority of potash mines globally are very deep underground. Uh, Chemiset is a relatively shallow potash mine uh, by global standards, but it's still a relatively deep underground mine. Uh, so accessing that mining horizon typically in potash is the first really big capital investment that you have to make. Um, what the announcement showed is relative to an average Canadian peer, which is 35% of global supply comes out of Canada, it's estimated to cost them over a billion dollars to go from the surface down to their mining horizon. Uh, our announcement shows that our independent experts estimate that we will be able to access the mining horizon for $35 million. Um, I mean, that's an incredible cost saving relative to a huge proportion of the global market. Um, and so it's really fundamentally going towards that claim that we made as a management team that this project has the potential to be low capex. What is it about um, what's going on in terms of how you're going to access this? I see the word decline. Um, that's something I believe that's unusual and relatively inexpensive, that method of entry into the, into the mine. Yeah, so a decline is effectively just a tunnel, uh, like any tunnel that you would uh, drive on on a motorway. Uh, it uses the same sort of equipment, just at an angle going down into the, into the earth, obviously. Uh, the difference is uh, most of the Canadian mines and most basins in the world have to do a shaft. And the fundamental difference is there is an aquifer that has to be passed through. At Chemiset, there's no aquifer, meaning we can use a decline to get down to that mining horizon, significantly cheaper and significantly lower technical risk in mm. the method that we're choosing to approach that mine access. What about the resource itself? How big or what do we know about the potential size of this? So the portion of the basin that we control, uh, the resource that we've estimated currently is about 300 million tonnes uh, of mineral resource in the ground at a grade of about 10.2% K2O. In our view, that's enough to support a mine of over 20 years, 
as of today. The basin is not closed. It's certainly more expiration upside there. We put out an expiration target that shows it, we think it has the potential to more than double. Uh, needs ongoing expiration work in order to prove that up. Uh, but the basin itself is very large. Uh, if you consolidate the whole basin, there are, there's one other large landholder in the basin. Uh, if you consolidated the whole basin, it would be a very large basin indeed. Mm. So you're, you're close to infrastructure? That's one of the big stories of Morocco, absolutely. So the, the, this is a bulk commodity. Uh, infrastructure plays an absolutely fundamental role, not just in capex, but in your end margins. And in Morocco, uh, we have absolutely amazing infrastructure. So the road network uh, is second to none, as good as any road that I've driven on in Europe. We have power lines running across the top of the project. Uh, we have ports in place with confirmed capacity and availability for us to build facilities. And interestingly, they're already handling salt which is uh, very similar to potash in terms of its handling requirements. So the infrastructure is a big p part of this story and actually the next lot of news flow will really start talking to those infrastructure advantages. Mm. Um, what is the cash situation at the moment? You talk about 35 million um, to, to get this project um, up to a, an appreciable point. Um, you're still some distance from that though, aren't you? Yeah, we're quite a way away. Your, your balance sheet's looking like. This study is really the first part of our uh, technical assessment of the project. We have slightly less than four million pounds left after a six million pound raise. Uh, we've done quite a bit of technical work already. That's more than enough to get us through this scoping study, all of our drilling, all of our MET testing and potentially a large way into the PFS. Uh, so we're, we're really well financed uh, right now and certainly till the end of next year. Mm. And then when do you expect to start the PFS and when is the next stage expected to kick off? I would expect we'll try and kick off the PFS as soon as we've delivered the scoping study or a, a couple of months after we've delivered the scoping study. Uh, there will be a small period of time that we spend doing some optioneering and working out, you know, have we, have we made the right call through that scoping study? Is there anything else we want to change before we kick off? But we would expect, uh, assuming we have a positive scoping study, that we'll roll straight into that PFS and kick it off immediately. Mm, okay, uh, so milestones from here, what are we looking at in terms of some of the headlines? So a lot of it is uh, small discrete portions of the scoping study. Um, fundamentally, the next four pieces of news flow are going to be access to the roads. Uh, really key is how you get your product from your mine to your end market. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to put it onto a boat at some point. How do we get to that port? Uh, a big part of this story is the road infrastructure that's already in place. So we'll put out an announcement that shows how much it's going to cost us to connect to that road infrastructure. Um, the next piece will be connecting to the electrical infrastructure. So how are we going to power the mine? Uh, because we have electrical infrastructure in sight around the project area. Uh, and then gas infrastructure, because we, we were cons consuming gas uh, in order to dry our product and pr process the product. And then also the port infrastructure. What investment do we have to make there? And then that really leads us up to the end of the year and getting close to delivering that scoping study. Mm. Good. Well, look, good luck with everything. And Hayden, thanks indeed for taking your time uh, to join us here. It's Hayden Locke from Emerson PLC uh, with a look at uh, that potash project in Morocco.